Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. 43 ministers have taken oath to join Prime Minister Narendra Modi's new Council of Ministers. Ahead of the reshuffle, a total of 12 ministers tendered their resignations, including Union Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan, IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad and Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal. The Jammu and Kashmir police neutralized Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist Mehrazuddin Halwai, alias Ubaid, in an encounter with security forces on Wednesday. Arunachal Pradesh's Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports, Mama Natung, participated in a solidarity run recently with sportspersons and government department officials to encourage the athletes and the spirit of Olympics. Now for the news in details. More than two years after he returned to a second term, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to revamp his Council of Ministers. 43 ministers have taken oath in a ceremony to join Team Modi. The expansion sees the entry of several new faces, with the BJP giving its coalition partners more room in the Council of Ministers. Among the big names, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, Pashupati Kumar Paras, Bhubendar Yadav, Anupriya Patel, Shobha Karan Laje, Minakshi Lekhe, Ajay Bhatt and Anurag Thakur have taken oath in Modi government's 2.0 cabinet. Other major names who have resigned include Health Minister Harsh Vardhan and Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. The reshuffle follows a protracted review exercise by the PM and the BJP top brass in a series of meetings with ministers. These were held in the wake of the devastating second COVID wave that has set off widespread criticism of the government for the mismanagement of the crisis. The Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee joined the rest of the country in protesting the unprecedented rise in prices of essential commodities and petrol and diesel. The agitation from the 7th to the 17th of July will witness a series of protests, a statement from the Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee stated. You see, in the past two months alone, the government hiked fuel prices on over 30 occasions and in more than 200 cities. The price of petrol has crossed Rs 100 per litre. The government charges Rs 32.90 per litre excise on petrol and Rs 31.80 per litre on diesel, it stated. The government has earned over Rs 22 lakh crore in the past seven years by imposing high excise duty on petrol and diesel, the NPCC stated. Similarly, prices of edible oils have nearly doubled in the past six months and prices of pulses also have seen an unprecedented rise, it stated. Moved by the plight of the people already suffering on the account of the pandemic, rampant unemployment and job losses, the Congress party has launched a nationwide campaign demanding rollback in prices of petrol and diesel and check spiraling prices of essential commodities, the NPCC stated. In Dimapur, day one of the agitation program was in the form of banner and sticker campaigns and was launched by PCC President K. There at the Dimapur DCC office the party informed. Similarly, in Kohima, PCC working president Kredi Theno launched the agitation program from the Congress Bhavan. A series of agitation in various forms have been planned for the next 10 days, the NPCC stated. Chief Minister of Manipur N. Birain Singh inspected the progress of the ongoing construction work of the 120 feet high statue of Sagol Kongjai. Polo player riding a pony today at Margin Hills, Imphal East. Singh was accompanied by DC Imphal East, Director of Tourism, officials of the Public Works Department, Government of Manipur and others. Speaking to media persons, Biren Singh said that construction of the 120-foot high statue has been affected and delayed due to the pandemic. He also informed that concerned officials had been instructed to expedite the work and complete it by October 2021. Stating that the Cabinet-approved Chief Minister's COVID-19 affected livelihood support scheme, the previous day he added that the scheme aimed to provide direct transfer of rupees 5,000 to around 2 lakh individuals whose livelihoods had been directly affected by the pandemic. 
Maintaining that the monetary assistance would be given in two equal installments to the beneficiaries, the Chief Minister also stated that the first installment would be transferred to the beneficiaries within this month and the second installment would be given by August 2021. He further added that eligible occupations include street vendors, farmers, daily wage workers, construction site workers, rickshaw pullers, public transport drivers, school van drivers, artisans and others. Later, the Chief Minister inspected the mass vaccination drive held at Ibaudu Mar Jing Lai Harao Pam and Primary Health Centre, Haingang, Imphal East. The Jammu and Kashmir police neutralized Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist Mehrazuddin Halwai, alias Ubaid, in an encounter with security forces on Wednesday. Ubaid, one of the oldest commanders of the Hezbollah Mujahideen for North, was killed at Pazipura area of Kralgund in Handwara, North Kashmir. The operation was launched by a joint team of police, Army's 32RR and 92 Battalion of CRPF in Kralgund area of Handwara after inputs of the presence of terrorists in the area. The area is still under cordon and the search is going on. There are only about two weeks left for the Tokyo Olympics to begin as athletes prepare to compete for glory in the world's most fabled sporting event which will start on July 23rd. India is sending about 115 athletes to the Olympics for which the Indian government led by the Prime Minister has started sending out messages to prominent personalities to encourage and support the athletes. The Olympic fever has reached Arunachal Pradesh also. The state's Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports, Mama Natung, participated in a solidarity run recently with sportspersons and government department officials to encourage the athletes and the spirit of Olympics. The idea was also to cheer for India and spread that message among the people of the state, update stated. In more regional news, Chief Minister of Manipur, N. Biren Singh, said, As a human being, extending help and serving the poor and needy people is the greatest service among all. This was stated by him during the launching function of dry ration distribution to 3,000 beneficiaries of Churachanpur district via video conference held at Chief Minister's Secretariat today. Speaking on the occasion, the Chief Minister stressed that the objective of the government is to uplift the lives of the people and has introduced various people-centric welfare schemes such as CMHT, CMST and others. Under the lead leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the central government has implemented various schemes for needy and poor people of the country, he added. He mentioned that the Modi government has successfully launched the world's largest free COVID-19 vaccination for all. Minister for Tribal Affairs and Hills, Vungazin Valte, urged the auto drivers to get themselves vaccinated as soon as possible as they are dealing with the general public by ferrying passengers. He also said a meeting will be convened regarding mass vaccination drives for the auto drivers of the district soon. It may be mentioned that crypto relief ration kits are being supported by the Center for Community Initiative, Highland Group, Sunbird Trust and Umid Project. It will be distributed to villagers of Mualum and Tuitapi villages, farmers around Swangpi, Kaulmun, Ngurti, Kailam and Ji Bualjang village, barbers, daily laborers, rickshaw pullers, auto rickshaw drivers. Crypto Relief Ration Kit includes 12 kilograms of rice, poha, chili powder, dhania powder, cumin and sanitary pads. Enhancing the digital education system in the state, Nagaland School Education Advisor Katie Sukalu on July 7th, Wednesday inaugurated a recording studio at the Directorate of School Education in Kohima. This recording studio was funded by the Samagra Shiksha of Nagaland. Speaking during the occasion, Sukalu said that the recording studio will reach out to students in all corners of the state. Touching on the difficult times in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, Sukalu said that depending on the nature of the situation, the people should try to work out the system so that the students, society and public are not deprived. The advisor also requested teachers, especially the government teachers, to interact with the parents and students and also gather opinions on online learning. Also, School Education Principal Director Shanava C. said that the recording started in May 2020 in a temporary facility at the Directorate. A request was made to the Ministry for Provision for a recording studio, which was approved and within a year, the studio was set up. 
Personnel of the Dimapo Traffic Police on July 7, Wednesday, detained a known local person at 7th Mile in Dimapur, allegedly for driving on the wrong lane, besides assaulting the personnel and attempting to flee. The man, unidentified at the time of this news report being filed, was seen tied up. When Hornbill TV queried about the traffic police on duty why he had been tied up, the personnel said the driver was driving in the wrong lane and when he was stopped, he assaulted the personnel and fled but was caught at the 7 mile gate. After Hornbill TV covered a, an issue on July 6 concerning poor courier services in Dimapur, the Chumukidima Town Students Union have filed an FIR with the Chumukidima Police Station on July 7th. The union said that they came to know through Hornbill TV that there had been a verbal complaint lodged with the police station. A copy of the CTSU's FIR stated that all the courier services in Chumukidima have adopted a culture of fleecing while sitting in their office and asking the customer to come to their office and collect the items or goods. This is totally opposite to what the customers are paying for the service, the organization stated, comparing the courier services attitude to extortion. The youth organization has asked the authorities to investigate the matter. The National Service Scheme NSS unit of Little Flower Higher Secondary School in Kohima observed Forestry Week with the theme One Student, One Tree from July 1st to the 7th. 110 NSS volunteers comprising 90 students from the art stream and 20 from the science stream participated in the event, which was being conducted for the past seven days. During the event, a total of 120 saplings were planted by the NSS unit and the secondary teachers of Little Flower High Secondary School, Kohima. During the week-long event, the NSS volunteers participated in the plantation drive, with each volunteer planting a sapling in a protected area. Kajini, a teacher from the school, told Hornbill TV on Wednesday that the sole motive was to improve the number of trees, adding the information was disseminated online. It was followed up by the students, after which various trees were planted by the students in and around their homes. The objective behind the team is to publicize the importance of trees. Trees are more important now than ever, and it is the beacon of hope for a better future, the school said. After the Ex-Servicemen Association of Arunachal Pradesh, or the ESMAAP, urged the state government of Arunachal for immediate formation of the Raja Sainik Board, or the RSB, in December of the previous year, the government has constituted the board on July 7 for the welfare of ex-servicemen. In a tweet, the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh, Pema Kandu, stated that Arunachal always stands committed to welfare of ex-servicemen and is happy to inform that the state has constituted the board. The meet was attended by Kandu, First Board Director Air Mosobi and APPSC Member Major General Jarkin Gamlin. Earlier, the association said that due to non-formation of the institution, Various welfare schemes, both from the centre as well as the state available for veterans, widows and next to kin, are not being implemented properly. The Delhi police busted two fake call centres in Kirti Nagar and Mangolpuri area and arrested 94 people for duping US citizens on the pretext of renewing their social security scheme. They conducted a raid at a call center in Kirtinagar area, acting on a tip-off that it was involved in large-scale cyber cheating of U.S. citizens on the pretext of revocation of social security number under the garb of travel agency, namely the Global Airfares. During the raid at Kirtinagar, 20 to 25 persons impersonating as the Social Security Administration Department from the U.S. were engaged in communicating with the victims, the police said. The accused were using illegal techniques, VOIP calling, bypassing the legal international long-distance gateways to cheat innocent people based abroad on the pretext of saving people from suspending social security number. After seeing this raiding team, they disconnected the calls and tried to run away but could not succeed, it further said. A total of 28 persons, 25 men and 3 women were involved in this gang and were using high-end technical software Visidel and x -Lite for making calls impersonating USA numbers. The police identified Amit Tyagi as the owner of the call center, who admitted that he was also running a similar operation in the Mangolpuri area. As many as 68 people were arrested from the call center in Mangolpuri, the police said. 
A case has been registered in the matter and an investigation is underway. A 10-year-old male tiger was found dead at the Ranthambore Tiger Reserve in Sawai Madhurpur district of Rajasthan on Tuesday morning. 65, also known as Suraj, was found at around 9 a.m. by the patrolling team in Khandar area of the RTR. The tiger was born to T19 on May 26, 2011 and had a litter with Tigress T69. Chief Wildlife Warden T.C. Verma said the tiger was found in a waterhole and a probable cause of its death was cardiac arrest, but they could only confirm once the viscera report was received. The post-mortem has been done. In April, a five-month-old tiger cub was found dead in Gandhra Day area of RTR. The mutilated body had a canine mark around the neck, so forest officials suspected it was killed by another tiger. Earlier in March, four tigers, including two sub-adults, were reported missing from RTR. The administration started an intensive search for them. RTI has around 80 tigers in an area of 1,334 square kilometers, making it the third most congested habitat for the big cats in India after Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand and Kaziranga National Park in Assam. The status of tigers in India 2018 report said Rajasthan has witnessed an increase of tiger population by 115% in the last 12 years. That's all for tonight's English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.